Alrighty, I've been yelled at a couple of times to get off my lazy keister and make another, another damn YouTube video. So, for those of you that are being hounds on me and demanding I make another YouTube video, here it is. The prototype proof of concept build to what will be known as the terabit, the true terabit. Even though the number is going to be much larger than a terabit now, with the way that I put it together, um, yeah, I'm still going to keep the name just because I, I like it. Anywho, a uh, couple of the, the extra little features that I've slapped onto this thing, well, actually, before that, before I get too ahead of myself, um, yes, this is created by uh, Me So Lost. Uh, that is me. I've used the same name for years, so if you see me so lost or me so lost 420, that is probably me. Um, I've had a couple of pieces in here made by uh, my friend uh, S. Gort 87 for the. Uh, he did the keypad. He also did this uh, lovely analog register. Some of this extra stuff that stuck onto the outside was me because I needed this register in particular to do some pretty fancy stuff compared to just the basic uh, self-shifting register system. So, yeah, this, this is quite an achievement. I actually have to give him props for this because when you put in an analog number, analog meaning um, like the signal strength at input is less than 15, but is not always at one point, as in it's not exactly five places away from a repeater no matter what. No, we use signal strength. So to do the signal strength repeaters, we actually have to stretch out with these huge long line of actual repeaters so that we get a true signal strength coming through on there. And like with this uh, big green thing here, I'll show you what that goes to later, that is the kind of BS that you have to go through to string out a large single, you know, single wire, single strength slash analog slash hex whatever you want to call it I'm only using uh, 0 through 9 technically 10 maybe 11 at some points in the actual uh, analog adders up there but for all intents and purposes it's a 0 through 9 system so it's base 10 uh, so I've got the extra 5 in the adders to do all the extra stuff um, yeah, so how this thing actually works is here encased in this glass because when noobs that have no permission click on these damn things to try and see what's in them, somehow the game glitches and I end up with random quantities in these things. So I had to completely block off the entire multiplication matrix so that nobody could touch anything and only then I didn't have to debug the matrix three times a day during the build process. Oh my god. Yeah, I was having to debug it three times a day just to be able to try and debug some of the, the early stuff. Once I actually slapped the glass casing on it, the thing built up, no problem. But, anywho, like I said, some of the special features that I wanted to show you first is, uh, the analog self-shifting register by Escort87 is really ingenious. When the analog number comes in, it'll actually, uh, store it in the little, uh, analog memory loop going on here. But the nice thing is, is it has these little mid things here using uh, more comparators and subtract uh, shunt mode basically to uh, stop everything so that when you do the next input, it'll take what's here in this bit and push it to this one and then the new number will come into here. 
and then when you enter the next one it'll shift this one up to here at the same time it shifts this one to here and the new number goes into here and so on so it's really nice if you enter a three digit number it only takes up only these first three digits and you know the number is always going to start right here I don't have to have any extra anything to force it to shift down each time then I can use these blue things here which is actually a detect if a number is here thing so that the highest one like if I had 501 even though this would have a zero and wouldn't detect a number this one here having the five would trigger the three here so it would tell me that I have you know three digits going into the counter and we'll get to those guys later now I definitely want to say awesome good job and thank you very much for that register I I would be baffled for quite a while trying to figure that guy out I've actually ended up using that thing twice the second time I didn't need it to do quite as much stuff I just needed to hold numbers and shift them around so I have another one back here hooked up with a couple of little things as uh, this is for the the display so that as you're inputting numbers it'll display so as you input a number the first number no matter what is going to trigger this line which flies down here snaps on an RS latch right there and disables uh, the, the one digit here in the middle and also lights up the multiplication sign it disables the zero and lights up the multiplication sign and then when you hit the operand or the the multiply button that comes through on this other line and resets the latch so that the multiply sign goes away the zero comes back up and the display can resume normal calculation display operation all right so then let's see yeah we've got the uh, the reset and you know the next number and all of that coming through on here or no it's not when you hit operand it resets when you hit operand then it shifts the top number down to the bottom and resets the the top one. Oh yeah I didn't mention that not only does it does the thing shift down all five numbers it also has a it's a dual register so there's a second function where you hit shift and the whole number goes down into the second slot and you can in put a new number into the top so it's quite a little compact thing so technically this thing will store in the just this gray bit 5 times 2 16 bit hex numbers so this is 10 hex bits so he, I'll, I'll let you do the math as to how powerful this thing is as far as a memory storage device goes um, anywho you can see all of these uh, yellow guys like freaking crazy these are all the uh, analog send rails in order to get the uh, the numbers from the input display register or what I call just the input display buffer basically to the actual display digits all right now I think I did a video of my analog adder before but I don't know if I did it on a color coded one so this being a color coded one um, this chunk right here just this uh, this bit here 4 by 3 uh, on the yellow and the blue on each one that is my my mine I built this thing and compacted it. I actually had somebody on this server steal my memory cell, steal my entire analog adder down to, hold on, you gotta see this, because this is just absolutely stupid. Not only did they take it, see, I use like one helmet there, 
in order to, to power that or I use you know that guy with those specific things there not only did he copy the exact configuration of my carry systems he had to ask me why he needed the carry systems tell me that he didn't need he only needed one of the carry systems when you need both of them copied everything to the T except for the colors everything was to the T except for the colors only he didn't copy one of these he copied the one down on the floor that didn't have the carry in and that's what took him the longest just trying to figure out how to put the carry in together to add one to the output because he doesn't work with analog yet he's claiming this is his analog stuff you know who you are you know what you copied you know you copied it exactly anyway um, yellow and blue are inputs. Like I said, here's the memory cell on the front end. Uh, they've got their own little circuitry for doing things and whatnot. And so it's got, uh, like I said, two carry systems. First, it has a uh, whether A and B are equal to or greater than five. Not each one. It's whether A is greater than or equal to five and b is equal to or greater than five simultaneously then it will subtract five from a and subtract five from b and you need to have that kind of a carry system when you're trying to add nine plus nine because you can't get 18 out of a damn uh comparator that's why you need that carry system that you tried to leave out um, so yeah, you've got that in order to pull the 5 down, and then you've got the, uh, if sum is equal to or greater than 10, then you've got a carry bit on that too. So if one or the other of those is set, then carry out is enabled, you know, and then carry in is actually just before the, if the sum is greater than or equal to 10, and that's what I got right here. That's my carry in to here. And then this is powered by the, so it's a, to, to invert. So then I do the, the, add the last one in via subtract. Then I do my final inversion. Then I do the, if output is greater than, or, equal to 10 then subtract 10 from output and engage carry out I uh, know it all sounds a little twisted the red guy down here that is the uh, greater than equal to 5 carry system and this and gate the way that it is plugged in here oh so nicely with the the spread out torches specifically in these spots specifically wired in AT with spaces like that because of cross carry trip reasons having the torches there so that it specifically goes around and doesn't power those out and I don't have to have glowstone there was a specific design feature that I had to uh, work around during my compacting phase that was also copied <laughs> yeah, you can clearly see, now that I show all of these little detail things in the video, you can clearly see what you did. Anyway, I, I know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm harping on that. I'm just really, really, really teed when somebody tries to take something that I worked weeks on and rebuilds it in two days and says, oh, this is my original property. <sighs> Anyhow, we'll each of the adder outputs goes directly to the uh, the screen that I had made from before and they've got their their little thing and whatnot but uh how the adders work is it's a cumulative adding system so since I only work with the or in the input numbers to a side the blue B side as you can see the B memory input comes from this light gray sorry hiccups 
light gray loop back that I had to uh, dip and dodge and run kind of funky so that I could step up and an analog signal without losing any strength or having to do something funky with it. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt to work with analog, but it has its advantages. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, the loopback. So what I do is is I input a number to the A side, and then I wait for the number to propagate through, or what what I call the propagation time for the number to come through A be totaled in with B, uh, the first carry system and the first addition take care of at the same sign at the same time. If there's a carry, then the carry is initialized and the math is recalculated simultaneously. Uh, and then for the tens carry out, that's where you get the extra two ticks of delay for the carry out. But that's just on the adder. It still comes up even with that as a seven tick adder, and that's seven ticks to add, uh, you know, base ten numbers. And you could actually have this thing set up in such a way where you can have it do the addition of your hexadecimal system and have it run probably just about as fast. Because most of the adder, the uh, binary adders I'm hearing about are doing about seven ticks for the really good ones. For, you know decent speed ones so seven ain't bad so after this thing feeds through and you've got the total the total is sent out to the display and to the loop back at the same time now there's another bit of propagation time of waiting for the signal to go all the way through the loop back system and I had a really really bad issue with the zeros trying when the total equaled zero and I had no signal how do I get it to, to go back so now I actually had to put a zero detect via this little torch on this output rail so that when this thing goes to do the loop back store and it's trying to store a zero instead of leaving the number in here and not having anything come down it actually sends a reset signal to this memory cell allowing it to actually save a zero in the system that's another crazy fix that I had to, to deal with so now that I've got the actual adder system working and I can add numbers and all the carries work then I have to come out to here to this thing to the purple and what the purple is is my position select you'll notice there's a lower purple and an upper purple because when you multiply well when you're doing binary multiply I don't know how the heck you do it but when you're multiplying base 10 numbers you start out with I mean I'm only multiplying single digit numbers I'm working with one digit at a time and this is an issue that people have problems wrapping their brain around is how I can multiply two five digit numbers one at a time how it takes so long but how it still comes out right and it's because I have to go one at a time is why it takes so long and the reason why it comes out right is because I did some pre-thinking I thought I had and analyzed this uh, let's see I'll pull this out This way a sec. Da, 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 da. Okay. Now, back when you were in school and you did multi digit multiplication, you did three times six and then, or, you know, six times three and then six times two. I actually ended up doing it in reverse. But if you flip the numbers over, you know, imagine the four, five, six over top of the one, two, three. Then, you know, you do three times six and three times five and three times four and then you do two times six and two times five and two times four and so on and so forth that the, the long digit you multiply it out one digit at a time well that's essentially what I'm doing you know you can see that as you multiply it out you know when you multiply two you're basically multiplying twenty times so instead of you, you get the nine one two but then you've got that one space that you leave and that's actually a zero there and 
that's part of the quote unquote offset, which I'll explain in a bit. It's another issue that people have with what I'm doing. Um, I'll save the offset for when I actually get into actually explaining offset. But, uh, well, yeah, I'm explaining offset now, so. Dur -dur 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 -dur. Okay, so when I get the two digit number, okay, when I multiply, what is it? Like, oh, what did I did? I did it. Two times four is eight. Okay, right here. Um, when I do the two times four, okay, equals eight, what it is is this is two times four, okay, and that equals eight, but then what I do is two is in the, the second position of this number, okay, four is in the third position of this number, okay, so you take the position in number A, 2, plus the position in number B, which is 3, subtract 1 equals your store position. So this would be, you know, the 2 times 4 equals 8, and that is position of 2 plus position 3 minus 1, which is 2. So 2 plus 2 equals 4, so I store 8 into the fourth position and like you see here when the 8 goes into the fourth position from there then that's your result so how my multiplier works is because of the way the counters are and everything and I'm using countdown counters so that I can use 0 as the condition to, to move me through my sequencing which when I actually show you the sequencer I'll show you how the sequencing works um, so, yeah, it starts out with 1 times 4, and if you do all the math and everything, it goes to the fifth digit, and you can look at this, and you can see exactly how it is on every single step on how my multiplication system does this and totals it all up, and all of, all of the totaling and everything is handled by the adders with the memory cells and the loopback and the, the auto reset system and all of these other little pieces and things that I have in the sequencing which I'll also explain later okay so for those of you that have an issue, an issue on what I mean by the length of A as in if this is digit A this is our number A one two three four five it is five digits long if the, if, if the number was 1, 2, 3, the length would be 3. The, the number 4, 5, 6, the length is 3. It's 3 digits long. The length of A. I can't get any simpler than this. It's friggin' basic programming language. It's called basic for a reason. Okay, so the length of A, okay, and where, how you use to get to the position, and, and those numbers and issues, these will become important in the sequencing and the counting on how the program is actually run. So, okay, that's that's what I mean by the length of A, and this is what I mean by your position of A and position in B, all right? So you should know, you know, there is how the adders work is A and B and S and C out and C in, all right? So you've got A and B, which is the numbers that you're adding. S is your sum, and your carry in and carry out. Okay? If you don't know those basic things, then you need to go back to Wikipedia and learn some stuff. <laughs> <coughs> All right, anywho. Now that you can see this, and you can actually see into the mad inner workings of the math that I foresaw when putting this thing together, okay, like when I have, oh, why did I put a dollar sign there? Anywho, it doesn't matter, you know it's supposed to be a, an and sign, but like here, where, where I get a two digit number, and I say it goes into the third and second digit. Now, now how do I, how do I establish that it goes into third and second digit? Well, I already told you how I establish where a single digit goes. Well, that position marks the ones spot, okay? 
much so with that position that we are calling up, marking the one spot, that position is triggered on this line. Now when we trigger this line, that enables our purple buses, okay, those, those are our, our number bus, is these purple rails that go this way. We have to, that's where the numbers completely propagate and the whole rail is live with that number. Then we tell it to store, okay, part of the sequencing, when I tell you to store, it goes down to that, this big green thing down there, and that's the, the storage position select, which engages all of these blue lines, which goes to our storage position. When we engage a storage position of one, this enables the lower digit to go into the ones position, but at the same time enables the high digit, the tens digit, <coughs> to go into one step above that, into the tens spot. So if we're multiplying out the that number and it says that it goes into the second and third position, okay, well, the lowest one that we're calling, we see the first number goes into the second position. So we call up line two for storage, which is this line right here, and that lets the lower number go into, say our number is 12, all right? I, I know it was supposed to be eight, but say the number we're putting into position two is 12, okay? The two is on the bottom rail, the one is on the top rail. So when we hit store, the two goes into position two, which is our tens digit there, but then the tens, the number one, goes into the hundred spot there. And it all just stores up, and then the numbers propagate through the adder. The adders come out with the total. Then we do the, the loopback store call, which uh, what that does is that opens up the, the loopback rail so that the number floods the gray rail and then it resets all of the memory cells all at the same time so the adder system is zeroed out and as it's resetting all of the system or all of the the memory cells our gray loopback bus which this was actually uh, a little bit of a bonus to have such a lengthy slow bus is that as I'm resetting everything, the number is still live in this bus, so I can reset everything to zero and have the number reprogram the, the B input for our running total all at the same time and not have to worry about, you know, move it over here, reset all this stuff, move it back into here. It just kind of uh, holds in, in storage through the bus as the reset process is taking place. And because my memory cells are two tick auto program, then you know you, you don't need anything else. You you put in two ticks and one tick, that's engaged, two tick, uh the that's reset. One tick, that guy's flooded, two tick, this is on, putting it into here and then on three tick that guy's picked well oh damn it I stupid laser mice catch on a line on a mouse pad anywho well third tick that guy picks it up puts it into there and boom now you've got a live loop it feeds back and your number is restored two tick auto store so as long as I have two ticks worth of data saved on this bus at the completion of the reset cycle on the memory cells then the number is properly stored and I figured all of that into the timing as well okay uh, now the matrix I told you about the matrix before and just think of a multiplication table like you worked with you know back in the day except that I don't have mine specifically set up so that it goes you know one two three four five six seven eight um, what it does is it goes one three five seven two four six eight because of the way the analog decoders work I have to have the space of two and rather than have something or here this one will be easier for you to see 
because I need uh, two of the analog digits in order to enable and re-disable a selection of a number. Um, I didn't want to have the second half of the detector out on this side like I did uh, on the uh, storage bus select. Um, I wanted to have it more linear since uh, the length, the the matrix was longer anyway. I didn't have to have this so compact. So what I did is I went with the decoder with the analog repeater basically built onto it over to the second half of the decoder that does the other. So like this side will do um, like uh, two, four, six, eight, and this side will do. Uh, three, five, seven, and nine. And you notice how I'm not saying one, because as I was building this, one times any number is just going to be one, so why the hell do I need to have one times nine equals nine, and one times eight equals eight, have all of those twice over in this entire matrix? Instead, what I did in order to increase the speed and reduce the size of the matrix is when number one comes in, instead what one does is it enables this little confounded system over here that I have with these little sound pistons is what I call the one uh, loop through system or one pass through system or t times one pass through. Okay, so that if nine is on is coming through one side and one's coming through the other side then the side that has one instead doesn't enable anything in the matrix so nothing so one half of the matrix is not engaged so nothing can unlock to open instead it enables this piston and allows the opposite number to pass freely into the ones digit of the bus and I only need the ones digit because the most I'm going to get is one times nine on a one times system. So I don't need to have something to push a number through on the tens. And in the case of one times one, then I'm putting both numbers on the bus at the same time. So the number on the bus is one and the number on the bus is one. So it doesn't matter. The number's one anyway. If you're you know, trying to, to say that there's an issue, well, what if you have one times one? Well, it doesn't add one and one here. It just puts a one strength signal into the same spot twice. It's still one. The signal's still one. It's just energized from two sources, but it's still one. So, you know, there's that. Um, that's a copy position. This is a, a remote reset in order to, to reset the display. Uh, part of the, the resetting system. Uh, down here we've got the same uh, compacted system, only I've got this uh, pass up and over. Yeah, the position select. So it pops up, does all of its thing, yada yada, and fun as head. Uh, sorry, a little bit of gassy. This brown under here you can ignore. This, what it is, is when it comes through and it, uh, when you hit start and it goes, that light will shut off. When it's finished calculating, the light will come back on. Well, when that light comes on, it turns this thing on, which starts a, a loop process and a timer. So it goes through this loop twice, so it launches a firework out of each one of these boxes twice, and then the timer cuts the loop off after two rotations, so you only get ten fireworks launched as part of the calculation is finished. That's just because I was so happy when I finished this thing. Okay, now on to the sequencing and stuff. Um, the the counter here, uh, I took this counter from somebody else who actually used it 
as part of uh, making the most compact count up countdown counter you can and they came up with this very very nice uh, compact analog count up countdown system and since it was analog signal strength based and that's what I was doing I'm sorry I had to take it especially when you could so perfectly easily cut off the count up or cut off the countdown side and with a tiny little tweak that I did myself this little blue guy here I can force program it to a specific number uh, from somewhere else so into the actual program I showed you how we determine what the length of a number is uh, we have our counter for the uh, for a here we have our B counter here let's see this is that's a pulse lengthener we'll get into that later um, so yeah there there's the two counters so we've got the this blue here the length of a that we can push into counter for a and then we have the blue down here, the length of B, that we can push into counter B, uh, test switches, and then we've got, what's this guy here, oh yeah, so rather than have uh, the, uh, Okay, so when we actually go to um, select which number it is that we want to pull out and send to the matrix, um, Gort and I, it, it, it was a, a little bit of back and forth. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I do kind of want to take like 55% of the credit because it was one of the little... The, the critical things of what I had done of stacking these torches in this weird fashion like this that actually got this one wide analog breakout system I mean a analog decoder so this is a one wide analog decoder where everything comes out on the same side versus all of my other analog decoders where the odds come out on one side and evens come out on the other side this thing is a work of art at least as far as I'm concerned it it, it just truly is I, I, I love it so this is what we feed an analog signal into like a one two a three a four or five in order to select a number now like what I said when we do the the one digit at a time you know if we're doing the third digit of this and the first digit of the one down there then we've got to be able to pull only that one number out at a time and put that number on you know the A bus or you know the B's number on the B bus so I've got one bus for A and one bus for B this white chunk here is what we use to select which number goes onto the bus okay and then we've got the uh, what that is fed from is the counter output okay so the counter output is what we use to select what number gets fed into the A bus and B bus. Now the A bus and B bus are hardwired, always live, no special select, as in, you know, there's no piston select in order to, to push it over into the matrix. So as I, I'm shifting through everything, I, I run the counter and, you know, one piston, uh, Piston 3 will go off, piston 2 will come on, and now number 2, or digit 2, that happens to be like a number 8 or whatever, I don't care, but the thing is, digit 2 now 
goes down the rail, and then when the counter is hit again, then two goes off, and one comes on and one sent down the rail, so that I don't have to, you know, temporarily set the number down there and have a memory cell that I have to have another special reset function for uh, down there uh, for the, the number select on the matrix. So then, uh, all right, how the whole sequencing goes. Now that you know how all the numbers are stored and how the registers function and how it is that we call up each number from the register and how we determine how many numbers are in the register as in the length of A and to select our position and to select our storage position and our loop back and what I mean by propagation time now that we have all of this stuff taken care of and you have an in-depth knowledge of what it is that I mean by all of this stuff after 40 minutes now I can finally tell you how the program actually runs okay so when you actually input your number okay we're just gonna do and good thing about this is the way that all of the timing stuff is set up is as long as you give it just a little bit of time in between hitting those buttons you can just punch them as fast as you want and because of the length of the bus to the display buffer the display is behind the actual uh, computational snor or number storage system but so you can actually punch this and ignore the screen and do that. Well, I, I, okay. It doesn't dis disable one number. It disables two numbers. Anywho, but there's my, you know, my digit display, and that's after I hit the first one in, and then. But operand. If you don't know what an operand is, you need some more English language tra training. An operand is a function. It is what you are doing add, subtract, multiply, divide. So this is the operand button. In this machine's case, this is the multiply. So you enter the first number, then we hit our multiply to tell it that we're ready for inputting the second number, and then it shifts the number both here and over there from A to B side. So now we see our B number, our, our A number well, technically it's B, because the first number we input is B, so it's shifted down into B. Now we enter our A number. So, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm going to do a 5 at the end, just because I don't have something set up at the moment in order to skip over computing through a zero uh, in this system so this thing will actually you know if, if there's a zero in here it'll actually do five loops of multiplying against a zero and storing zeros in, into the adder and adding zero yeah so they'll, they'll, if you have a zero in the number you'll notice a loop sequence where nothing on the screen changes at all so there's our two numbers input and everything's stored over there fine and over there fine so now we want to tell it to function so we tell it equals and by doing equals that sends a signal over to the system over there and that's what does the reset which turns off the the time sign puts both of the zeros back up and by hitting the start there it goes through primary programming so the first thing it does is it comes down this pink line it shoots up over to here it resets the light it comes over to uh, yeah, it resets the light and it also or no yeah it programs the length of A into counter A all right, so now we have length of A and the counter A, and it does that just when you hit the start the one time, because all of our other loopbacks won't pass through that. Now, as we do the main start as well, you'll see I, I've got this uh, slab here, 
And the reason why I use a slab is because I want this to be energized or energized once when I start the program and then it's also energized somewhere else. Now what this is is this is the uh, it's another just tiny pulse lengthener and this is the store length of B into counter B okay and that's something that we actually have to do several times during the process now the program is running as I as I explain this and we can just let it run everything's cool <coughs> Anywho, okay so that's the first thing it does is it stores the length of A and the length of B into each of the counters and then we enter our the brown system which is our A loop now it comes over to here we have our uh, it's a, a propagation delay okay these switches here are specifically for end program so when program is ended these guys are, ena are, are enabled so that nothing else can happen after there as because it's supposed to cut it off after that but if it happens to delay it's got an extra cut here because of you know like a zero instance and all of that I, I just found it works better like that um, you'll notice this piston here that weirdly does its little thing you probably noticed it shift back and forth and uh, what this is is if counter B does not equal zero so as long as counter B is greater than zero this piston is engaged so that B loop will run okay so we've done our, our A storage and all of that our A B storage come down this backside and now we get into the the B loop now at that program at the beginning this goes over and we're in our first B loop with our numbers pre-stored you see it just shifted again That's because it got to the end and it, it had to do its little sequence I'll get to what that sequence is okay now this is the B loop propagation time okay in order to allow the number to propagate down the uh, the storage bus the purple rail okay and also to propagate through the uh, the adders okay then we call up this line here this guy pops out and does what does he do oh that actually does the the store number command when that number is is hit or when that line is hit that's when the pistons actually engage from the purple line just like you saw right there in order to store the total or the the number from the matrix into the adder system okay so now through that loop now we've got the number from our matrix stored on the uh, on the a input side it's gone through the adder and now we have our total we come through here and we you know calculation time let it do its thing then we call up this line this line goes out to here and it does uh, the the loop back and reset okay so that that line is what actually does the uh, energize the loop back line get a solid signal out and then close the loop back line initiate memory cell reset and then the last straggling signal on the loop back line programs the the yellow memory cell which is the B input on the adder which is our accumulator and running total okay so now we have our number totaled okay and resaved back into our accumulator side that doesn't take too much time at all uh, also as part of that line we do B counter minus one so this line here goes off to the little trigger on the B counter which does minus one which moves us from digit five down to digit four 
which then on our computational thing from position 5 and position 4 is 9 minus the 1. Now we're storing number in 8. And it goes through and does this until B gets down to 0. And when it says subtract 1 from B, and it's got this little delay here, uh-oh, B is 0. Now this piston snaps back over. Now the signal comes to here, goes to A loop, uh, to the A loop step minus one, which subtracts one from the A loop, okay? And then we let the, the A loop number propagate through the bus and through the matrix as we give it that little bit of time. And this time here is also the delay for the A zero detect and uh, zero calculation finished to propagate just like that and engage the uh, program stop function. And there is the entire multiplier. The, the program, the nuances, the special technology that had to go into it. Uh, like again, uh, again special thanks to uh, Escort87 for his keypad for uh, some help on actually getting my display made in the first place. Um, developmental help in the early stages of the memory cell. Um, complete development and building of the original analog uh, auto shift register. Okay, the with uh, auto digit shifting and with the, the manual shift down feature so that I can store two numbers at the same time of the same length. I, again, thanks so much for that. I, I'd be complete. Man, if you saw the monstrosity that I had built that this thing replaced, you would know how thankful I am to have that compact, lovely little thing. Uh, Alright, so was there anybody else that I... I don't recall actually letting anybody else actually touch this thing as I was building it. Um, and as a, a little playful thing, um, I have to put a, a middle finger up. I'm sorry, I have to at least just once to Doom of You. I'm sorry, dude. But when you reset my display, that twice in the middle of me doing debug runs trying to figure out why the hell I was getting wrong numbers out of my matrix three times a day I'm sorry that was annoying um, so yep that's my uh, my special thanks my uh, my one middle finger on the build uh, oh two middle fingers to all of the noobs who were going around and clicking on my damn matrix making the friggin numbers go crazy in the first place I know it's not supposed to but it's a friggin it's a glitch that we're, we're gonna have to mention to them because it happened I'm sorry I reprogrammed the thing like 12 times I know I programmed it and tested it 12 times and it wasn't until I put the glass on it and people stopped clicking on it did it finally stay programmed so I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is a glitch there <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you guys wanted a video, so here's a video, and you may not have liked it to be as long as a show that you're supposed to be watching on TV, but at least you didn't have to sit through any commercials, and hopefully you learned about some stuff. Um, any further technology stuff, you can uh, ask me on uh, Stim's Redstone server, that's uh, Beta.redstone dash server. Uh, what is it? Hold on. What is it? Where are you? There we go. Edit. Yeah. Beta.redstone dash server dot info. That's it. Dot info. Default port. So. Yep. Um, if you've listened to this whole thing th this far, uh, thank you. I know it can be long-winded, but like I said, there's a lot of people having some very severe issues trying to wrap their mind around 
basic programming terminology and how to multiply like you did in grade school. So I felt I needed to do a much more detailed explanation for all of this. So yeah, if I uh, find me on the server, you can ask me any of the in information that you want. I'll pass on all, all my knowledge. Um, it's just if you use one of my builds, are a piece of, or one of my components like my adder or my memory cell uh, my ultra compact uh, analog decoder thing um, I would respectfully request that you add a tag onto it with my with my name and the uh, the memory cell if you copy the one specifically that I have here uh, you'll also want to have on one of the lines saying that it is a uh, Analog mem cell version 3.1. All right, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you copy something of mine, like uh, my analog mem cell started out from somebody else's uh, little analog doodad. Only I pulled a tiny little pieces out of it. I threw more pieces out. I only kept one thing out of the whole thing and rebuilt an entire auto program memory cell myself from it. So that is why I am claiming ownership on this build because it has gone through so much revision that it is uniquely mine. Now if you take something of mine and you have altered it so much that it no longer looks like my stuff anymore, by all means slap your own tag on it and keep it for yourself okay make people put your tag on it I'm all for sharing stuff but I'd kinda like to be you know known that hey I actually did some work and I managed to do something that was kinda cool that cuz I'm 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 really really a noob at this stuff so it's uh be nice if people started to get to know my name and I should probably shut up by now because it's friggin' 57 minutes. Damn it. Bleh.